And so within your processing unit, you have this plug that you want to test. And it is possible that uh, this step two and three, may, you may be able to do it using a machine language. basically write a program and the program will put something in this register and then take a look at the response. Other possible uh, possibility would be it may involve micro instructions. Okay, how many of you have come across micro instructions? So I guess electrical engineers should know the term uh, micro instructions. So here, by micro instructions, I'm referring to um, how the control part of a processor is designed. And one approach is to uh, uh, have a, a your control part implemented using a uh, storage that uh, uses micro instructions. So basically, uh, this is something that you, uh, takes you down to the hardware level. Some, some, when you design the control part, you design your control part so that you are able to do this. So you can actually write some micro code, and that sometimes uh, refers to, is referred by micro code. So basically, you can write micro code that can do this. Or other possibility is that you can have some specialized hardware. Now let me mention about the specialized hardware. Let me come here and come to the famous BIST idea, which stands for built-in self-test. BIST. It is a very uh, popular technique in hardware. And uh, somebody came up with a clever idea. Here, we were assuming that you have separately generated the tests, and somehow you separately figured out how to examine the response. But somebody came up with a clever idea, and he thought, that well, what if I will make this register a special kind of register so that uh, in a certain test mode, it will actually generate tests. So here, you have a, uh, and with built-in test, here this is a generator. Which generates pseudo-random tests. So this one will generate a pseudo-random tests. Oh, wrong slide there. Yeah. Now, how do you generate uh, pseudo-random tests? Uh, there is a, a, a popular uh, uh, approach which uses something called linear feedback shift registers. So, and later on, perhaps, I will mention about the linear feedback shift registers. Have uh, come across uh, calculation of CRC for uh, the P 
package, transmission of packages on the internet. So it, it's, it's sort of somewhat related. And one way you can calculate CRC would be by using uh, linear feedback shift registers. Uh, and the underlying theory, which actually we're not going to look at, is actually the same. But uh, I guess it is enough for us to know that it's some kind of pseudo-random pattern generation. And if it is pseudo-random, and if you will let it run for sufficiently long time, it is actually going to become exhaustive testing. So you apply the vectors to the combinational subject. And so here's the uh, other part of the clever idea. So they said, OK, why don't I turn this register into a signature analyzer? And that is again, uh, in terms of uh, the underlying theory, it is actually related with uh, the idea of calculating CRC. Uh, so basically, the uh, responses, they are compressed into the signature. And after the full cycle is run, you take a look at the signature and see if the signature is what you expect. And if it is so, then it has uh, worked correctly. But if the signature is wrong, then you know that there have been an error. So this is referred to as the built-in self-test uh, approach. And this also uses linear feedback shift registers. Um, now there is a little probability that even if there is some uh, fault here, it is possible that the signature may not be able to detect it. And the reason is, whenever you create a signature, whenever you compress information, you lose some information. So um, it is possible to lose some information and possible to uh, miss a fault. But probability of that happening is rather rare. So it, in general, that is a, uh, a, a rather efficient approach. So the, basically the approach is that uh, in the normal use, this and this, they work like uh, ordinary registers. But in the test mode, so they have two modes. So one is normal mode, and the other is test mode. So in the test mode, uh, these things become, this becomes a generator and this becomes a signature analyzer. And in the normal mode, they are just like ordinary registers. And so that is the idea behind the built-in uh, self-test. Uh, any questions or comments so far? Okay, so, so far, so now this refers to the case, or, and this one also. Uh, they, both of them, they refer to the situation when there is no feedback in the sequential circuit. The next case we want to examine is when you have uh, feedback, and what are you going to do about uh, feedback? And uh, one very common uh, situation of a circuit with feedback is the control unit of a processor.
So we are considering this situation. So here we have some combinational logic. And here we have a set of storage elements. So here there's the general situation. So these are the storage elements. And if you will uh, uh, look it up on some book on uh, processor architecture, you can find out that uh, these inputs would be uh, your uh, operation code, the op code bits, and other uh, status bits uh, in the processor. And the outputs here would be the control lines that actually control the flow of information in the processing unit. And here, now this is the issue. Let, let me call these lines X, and let me call these lines Y, and these lines would be Z. So here are the issues. How to get the X, Y vector? Now notice that we are going to assume that all the faults are in the combinational circuit. And we know the problem of testing combinational circuit. All you need to do is to apply some input here and look at the output here. Right? So to apply some input here, and now the input here actually consists of these external inputs and this uh, state, which is also an input. So external inputs state, so they are the inputs to this combination circuit. And then, second part of it, uh, how do we, uh, uh, okay, so we applied a vector here, and here's the output, and we want to like, take a look at the output. Now it is easy to look at here, because in this case, we have, uh, these are coming out. But these lines are not coming out, they are going in. So the question is, how do we uh, look at the output? How do we examine uh, the output? And uh, let me call these lines, uh, what should I call these lines? Uh, maybe I will call them D lines. Output Z comma D. How do we observe these lines? And uh, so, that, so we want to continue this uh, next time, but uh, Um, so I, I let you think about this problem, and so people thought about this, and somebody came up with a rather clever idea, and the clever idea is the use of scan. So in fact, these are the two are supposedly the two most clever ideas in hardware testing. This is one of them, and other is scan. So yesterday I was in the board test workshop, and people would. Uh, talk a lot about Biston scan, Biston scan. Um, so we continue this uh, next time.